wow this is an old book i can't believe the name chad was used in 1903. hi my name is daniela and today we're going to talk about the most exciting video today i'm going to pick my february reads and yeah this is going to be fun okay so First of all, I should explain how I'm going to do this because I have this little jar in which I wrote down, I don't want to spill them, Ta -da! I wrote down every single book that I haven't read yet that I have in my um, bookshelves, uh, but I don't want to just pick random books for the entire month because I am very much a mood reader and maybe the books I pick, I just don't want to read them necessarily. So I have a system, okay? Bear with me. Let's put this back. So I picked some books, just a few. Um, and these are the ones that I'm in the mood to read. This is the mystery book. And then I'm going to pick two or three other books from from this and then we'll see um I, we'll see how it goes also i want to mention that there is a high possibility that i'm not going to finish reading all of these books some of them i might not even start and that's okay i just want to give myself options you know because if i have a few books and i don't want to read any of them some days i might not read any but if i have multiple choices then it will be easier for me to just decide what I want to read during that day. Okay, so let me start with the mystery book. So every month I'll have a book wrap, and this is a February's. It's a smaller book than January, and I'm so glad about that because January's was quite a thick one. So let's see what we got for February. Oh, come on. There we go. So excited. I don't want to rip the whole thing. There we go. So book number two, that, well, February's book that should have the number two in it is, oh, this is kind of, okay. It's Two Eggs on My Plate, famous true story of espionage in wartime Norway by Olaf Reed Olsen. Oh, is this a Nor uh, Norwegian author? That would be so much fun because then I can scratch off Norway from my list. So this is two eggs on my plate. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, let's see. One of the biggest selling true war stories ever published. It describes how Oluf Reed Olsen escaped to England in a leaking boat after training, was uh, parachuted back into Norway, employed German soldiers as informers, lived like a hunted fox, while his radio's reports sent dozens of German ships to their doom. So this is a true story. That is interesting. Uh, as you can see, it's a very worn down book. I did buy this from second hand, like most of the books that you're going to see. Not all of them, but most of them. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. This is a February mystery book. Okay, now let's talk about the books that I chose. So I do have a list of books that I started uh, last year or prior to that, and I want to finish this year. So for this month, I picked, from those books, I picked Republic by Plato. It's such a nice cover. Uh, as you can see, I've already started, but I have still a very long way to go. And this is the kind of book where you need to take notes because it is quite dense, but I do want to finish it this month. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And the other book is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I've been wanting to read this forever and my friend gifted this to me um, and I started it but then for some reason I couldn't continue it. I just, I guess it's the fact that I know that he'll die in the end that kind of puts a pause for me reading it. Uh, so Hamnet is about Shakespeare's son in particular, but also his entire family. And what's interesting about this is that Shakespeare is never mentioned by name in the book. So it's just a famous playwright. That's all you get. So um, also the fact that Hamnet dies 
is not a spoiler. It literally says it in the back of the book. It says, neither a parent knows that Hamnet would not survive the week. So that's all you need to know about this book, basically. Um, Hamnet is a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright, a boy whose life has been all but forgotten, but whose name was given to one of the most celebrated plays ever written, Hamlet. Um, so yeah, this is Hamnet. This is such a beautiful book. Like, look at this cover. Gorgeous. And I really, really hope to be able to finish it in February. But we'll see how that goes. Because again, this is a book I really want to finish, but for some reason I just can't manage to. But I'm really excited for it. Then, um, I like to pick a non-fiction every month besides all the fiction. I know Plato is not really fiction but I feel like this is more appropriate. This is a book that I have no expectancy of finishing in February. I just want to start it and just read a little bit every day. Uh, this is Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. As you can see, um, it looks like a small book. I've also divided it in weeks, but that's not going to happen. Um, it looks like a small book. Oh, look at this writing. Do you see this? This is ridiculous. It's insane. I mean, wow, insane. So no expectancy of finishing. There was something in my eye. No expectancy of finishing this book in February. None. I just want to start it and have a bit of nonfiction for all the books that I'm going to read. Um, after that, I picked Young Poets of Germany. Um, doesn't have an author because there are multiple ones. Um, this. I want to read because it's poetry, it's something easy to read. Um, it's not as um, mentally consuming as the other ones. So it's just nice to have options when you're reading. And as you can see, um, they're quite short. I also like that um, for all the poems, they have something about the author. So you also get to explore a lot of different voices and authors. Um, but I'll also be able to take off, like scratch off Nor oh, Norway, to scratch off Germany from my um, map because I'm trying to read a book from every single country and I feel like this would work well for Germany. And the last one that I pick is Almond by Wong Pyong Son. This is a uh, South Korean, yeah, South Korean author and this was translated by let me see. This was translated uh, from the Korean by Sandy Yusung Lee. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. But this is Almond. It's a, a, the story of a boy that doesn't feel emotion uh, or doesn't exhibit it. Oh, here you go. Yunjai was born with a brain condition called alexthemia that makes it hard for him to feel emotions like fear or anger. And it's his story. And it looks like an easy read or at least it looks like I'll go quickly through it because just South Korean and Japanese literature is close to my heart and I really love it and it's I just I feel like this will be really fun to read so this was Almond and those are all the books that I personally chose to read in February again might not happen but I like to have options now let's go for the mystery um, okay, so also I have, so I'll pick three books, right? I have the Veto Rice for two to say no and pick another no because maybe I, I, I don't want to read some of them, you know? Okay, so let's take a note. Oops, some of them fell. I'll pick them up later. Uh, the first one is... Um, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen by Paul Forday. This one here. Um, should I look for it now? Or should I look for it later? Hmm. I'll look for it later. I don't know. Should I look for it now or later? Okay, I'll look for it now. Mm, I'll look for them later because I want to pick 
three of these and then look for them in my bookshelf and see if I want to read them or not. So the first is salmon fishing in the Yemen. The second is, let's see, oh, another pink one. No, I want a different color, a blue one. So, oh, this is a long title. Uh, the House of Whip and Cove by F. Uh, Jacqueline Holquist. This one here, I'm sure you can't see it, but it's this one here. Um, and then the third one would be, give me a different color, okay, yellow. This is The Ambassadors by Henry James. This one here. So let me look for all of these books in my bookshelf and then I'll be, oh my God, so many things have spilled. Let me look for them in my bookshelves and then I'll be back to talk about them and see what these are about and see if I want to pick them or choose something different. I'll be right back. Okay, so the first one is Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. Um, no idea where it is. I have quite the collection. Um, there's some here. Where can it be? Salmon, salmon. Nope. Maybe here. Mm, oh, this one here. This one here. Salmon fishing in the Yemen. There we go. Now the next one is House of Whiffin Cove. This one will be interesting to look for. Where is it? Oh my god, I have so many books unread. Maybe I don't feel lazy, maybe I'm a bore. I need a lot, but I've been lazy, no me more. We go, we go, I'm thinning out my crown. Oh, there we go. It's this one here. The house on Wiffen Cove. The cover is really pretty. So it's this one here. And the last ones would be The Ambassadors by Henry James again. Oh, I found this pretty quickly. The Ambassadors by Henry James. This is author was born in New York as well. As you can see, I marked it. Okay, so I've managed to find all three of the books in my bookshelves. And let's see what they're about and see if I want to read them or not. So they're quite short, so I might be able to get them done with the other books that I chose myself. So that would be interesting. Uh, the first one is Salmon Fishing in the Yemen uh, by Paul Torday. This one here. Um, this is, okay, let's see what this is about. All right. When he is asked to become involved in a project to create a salmon river in the highlands of the Yemen, fisheries scientist Dr. Alfred Jones rejects the idea as absurd. But, but the proposal catches the eye of several senior British politicians. And so Fred finds himself forced to set aside his research and instead figure out how to fly 10,000 salmon to a desert country and persuade them to swim there. As he embarks on an extraordinary journey of faith, the different, the different, no, the diffident Dr. Jones will uh, discover a sense of belief and a capacity for love that surprises himself and all who know him. An entertaining and successful debut, feel-good comedy with a surprising bite, says the Sunday Telegraph. So do we believe the Sunday Telegraph or not? Also, this book was in Richard and Judy's summer read, apparently. I don't know who Richard and Judy are, but I think they're British. I'm not sure. But seeing as this was sponsored by Galaxy, the chocolate bar, I assume they're British. Um... I don't know, this sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I think I'll stick to this. This sounds like something I would read. Well, maybe, because there is a hint of romance, so I don't know about that, but we will see. Okay, so this will be a February maybe, because I'm not sure I will read them, but a maybe. Uh, the next one is this one, The House on Whiffen Cove by F. Jacqueline Holquist. Such a pretty cover. Like, I love this cover. Okay. From the moment she arrived on Saturday Island to claim her inheritance, someone tried to drive Kimberly Dahl away from the Clifftop Mansion overlooking Puget Sound. 
Uh, the beautiful young widow hoped to live there and paint to banish painful memories of the past. Instead, she was hostage to a house of secrets, a prisoner of fear. Uh, two men too dangerous to love. Uh, realtor Stephen Enders uh, held the key to her new kingdom and threatened her hard-worn independence by unleashing a riptide of passion she tried to deny. Mar uh, Marshall Thorne said that he wanted to buy the house. She knew he was lying. He wanted her but kept his distance. Why? What was the real motive behind the perilous, seductive battle for her trust? At least one person had already died in that house of horrors. Uh, now somebody was coming for her. The house on Whiffen Cove. Um, so this looks like a mystery thriller. Well, a mystery book nonetheless. Um, I don't know. I really like mystery. I like thrillers and crime and everything that has to do with it and again this is quite a short book I say short book it's like 231 pages um but it seems like something I would read so I think I will stick with this one as well so for now we have two out of three books which is fantastic let's see if this one is as interesting or not so the third one is The Ambassadors by Henry James and Okay, Henry James considered this book to be his most perfect work of art. The ambassadors of the title are the emissaries sent by Mrs. Newsom, a wealthy New England widow, to restore to the hometown and the family business her son, Chad. This feels fake, but okay. Her son, Chad, who had lingered too long in Paris, uh, reputedly detained by a sordid liaison. Lambert Strether? Sweeter? Lambert, the first of the envoys in the novel Straight Laced Hero, embarks on the mission only to find himself caught in the romantic intrigue, the outcome of which will radically change the direction and purpose of his life. Since his publication in 1903, wow, this is an old book. I can't believe the name Chad was used in 1903. But okay. Since his publication in 1903, The Ambassadors has come to be regarded as a masterpiece of American fiction because of its remarkable technical structure, its profound moral significance, um, and its perceptive contrast of new world conscience and old world culture. The signet classic edition of The Ambassador reproduces the 1903 Methuen text, which is the only one Henry James ever saw through the press with an afterword by R. W. Spalman. Yeah, so this is The Ambassador. It's a really old book, apparently. Well, this has to be a more recent edition, but yeah, this is the fifth printing. Um, but still, very old book. Again, he has such tiny writing. Like, why? Oh my god, I mean, maybe paper was expensive back then? But again, Emotion and Intelligence was published in the 2010s, so they have no excuse either. Um, I think I will try to read this. I don't promise that I will start or finish this, but I will try. So this is The Ambassador, the last book of February. Um, also, I'm going to keep these three notes separate because once I read them, I want to put them in this clear jar look how cute it used to be a candle i'm going to put them in this and by the end of the year i just i hope this will be far more filled and there will be far less notes in this one so we'll see how that goes um also i'm not going to put them yet i want to finish the book first so these are all the books i plan on reading in february honestly it's insane and i might not get it done at all and well okay and there are books that i might just not even start uh or there are other books from my bookshelf that i'll feel more inclined to read which is fine because you know as long as i read it's perfect it doesn't matter what i read but so far this is what i chose i'm really excited to start them uh the one book i really hope to finish is two eggs on my plate since this is the February book and I did say that this year I really want to read my just my all the rap books that I have like my monthly book if you will 
So that was me picking my books to read in February. I hope I will get it done, but if not, that's fine. Even if I read half of these, I will be very proud of myself because there's a lot of books here. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe if you like this. Um, put a comment, just what books are you reading in February? What are you excited about? Just any book recommendations, I'll take all of them, even though I might not buy them this year, um, since I am on a book buying ban. Um, but I do have a list of books I will buy once the ban is over. So um, leave your recommendation down below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul. Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls.